Welcome back to Smitty's Learning Room. Today we continue with Core 2 and we're going to focus on personal versus prescribed judging criteria. Before you watch this video, you might like to watch the video on objective and subjective measurements and validity and reliability of tests. So when we have a look at where this comes from in the syllabus, we're looking at the focus question, how does the acquisition of skill affect performance? And so far under this dot point assessment of skill and performance, we've looked at characteristics of skill performers, objective and subjective performance measures, validity and reliability of tests, and today we look at personal versus prescribed judging criteria. So just start by having a little bit of an overview. So some sports have a subjective element to them. So if you listen to the video on objective and subjective measurements, we would know that subjective measurements are those that are um, measured by a person or there is some form of personal input into that measurement. It's not a definite measurement. And because of this, officials try to make their measurements more valid, reliable and objective. So we've talked about in previous videos about how do we make um, tests valid and reliable and how can we increase objectiveness. So we start by having a look at personal judging criteria. Now these criteria are based on an individual's ideas and expectations about how performance should be measured. Now, perform or personal judging criteria is used commonly at the earlier stages of skill acquisition. So, athletes in the cognitive or even the associative stage, a coach may use personal judging tr criteria to try and encourage them to um, to increase their performance or to stay motivated. And so, some things that a coach or a judge might highlight are things around posture or um, looking at the placement of body parts. So for example, if it's a basketballer, you know, focus on your feet being closer together when shooting. So these are all very personal comments. They're not necessarily um, related to the actual objective outcomes, but they're things or feedback that can be used to actually have a look at what skill level the people or the athletes are at. So then we looked at prescribed judging criteria. Now these criteria are developed by the body which governs the particular sport. And so the governing body identify critical components of the skill ex execution. So for example, um, Gymnastics Australia will decide what um, criteria they're going to use for their national gymnastics event. And it's that criteria which will be used to judge from. So elite athletes will work within these criteria rather than personal judging criteria. So they will actually have a look at what is expected of them that's been set out by the governing body and they will try to develop their performance around those criteria. And so there are many sports that use these prescribed criteria such as diving, gymnastics and figure skating. That's not to say that athletes at this level won't be using personal criteria, but there is a heavy focus around that prescribed judging criteria. So looking at the two concepts in summary, when we look at personal judging criteria, this is our own ideas of what looks good. So a coach will use these most certainly at the cognitive and associative stage of skill to increase motivation and obviously to pinpoint things that are important in order to um, present a skill. And then we have prescribed judging criteria, which are set criteria, which we try to achieve. So these are a set by a governing body and an athlete will try and develop their performance around this criteria to try and get a good result when judged during performance.